Hi everyone, welcome to Property Inside Straight Talk. Tonight we have a very special guest. Of course, it's none other than Dr. Renisia Leong, uh, who is the property queen of Asia. Welcome to the show, Dr. Renisia. Thank you, Dato KK Chua. Thank you for having me. I would have loved to come on earlier, but I only uh-huh. just got my voice back. So this is the earliest I can come on. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, first off, uh, Renisia, uh, you do know that this COVID-19, now everyone is in the uh, MCO lockdown. And uh, the implication of it, according to IMF, is uh, the whole global economy is heading for recession. And uh, what do you think the economic landscape will be or will change in months to come? Yeah, this global pandemic is terrifying millions around the world. Yes. And uh, a pandemic of this magnitude is actually something that is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, we actually see 1 million people contracted Mm COVID-19. And uh, sadly, more than 50,000 lives has been lost. Mm-hmm. You know, this is actually the worst global crisis since World War II. Yes. And I am, IMF has declared we are in global recession. Mm-hmm. Although Malaysian government has actually put on a multi-pronged uh, stimulus package, mm-hmm. many SMEs are actually crying foul out there because there's really very little for them. And most of the reliefs and incentives are directed at end users, three to six months, pretty short term. Yeah? Yes, yes. So some of the notable changes, sadly, would be large percentage of SMEs will probably be forced to go out of business. True. And big corporations who are risk adverse will scale down expansion plans due to uncertainty, mm-hmm. putting a dent in our GDP. Mm-hmm. And MNC activities will be reduced as HQs will probably be shelving plans, cutting budgets, etc. Mm-hmm. And import-export sectors will face viral effect of the global demand supply constraints, you know, the mm-hmm. supply chain constraints. Mm-hmm. Overall economy will actually deep dive. Mm-hmm. That's how we see it, right? Sure. And based on the historical data, global recession is a 10-year cycle. Mm-hmm. 1997, 1982, 1991, mm-hmm. 2009. Yes. Probably with the exception of the year 2000. That's mm-hmm. where uh, it's due to the technological, technological search. All right? mm-hmm. So a self-correction mechanism will take nothing less than three to actually five years. Understand. So it's, it's a little bit uh, of time to wait. Mm-hmm. And then the months to come is not going to be very pretty. True. Uh, Post-MCO effect will actually kick in. Mm-hmm. Then the oil and gas industry, worrisome, all right? and it will be impacted by the dip in the oil price. When we did our budget, we were actually yes. basing it on 65 USD per mm-hmm. barrel. Mm-hmm. Today, it's hovering around 25, 30 USD per barrel. We can see the, the big gap you know, in between. Yeah. So businesses without sufficient reserves might be forced to scale down or probably even close down. True. So unemployment rate will definitely increase. Like in the US, you know, the past two weeks, uh, Mm-hmm. We actually see the search to 10 million yeah, people are actually going for that. Yeah, unemployment claim, which is like scary stuff, you know, so we can just imagine the magnitude around yes. the globe. Yeah. So GDP will be reduced. And in fact, um, the World Bank has just, just uh, put it out that our GDP is at 0.5 now, minus. So it's actually a contraction, you know. Mm-hmm. So all this is actually not pretty at all. And uh, Bank Nagara's reserves will definitely be reduced. Mm-hmm. And actually, Bank Nagara, we expect them to be further reducing interest, at least two interest rates, at least two rounds, you know, uh, going that. towards the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, not very pretty. Yeah. So, the other thing is uh, bringing back to the property industry. How will it impact our property market uh, with, with, with this uh, economic uh, uncertainties? I'm sure there will be many repercussions out of it. Uh, what, what is your take on that, uh, Renisa? Well, the impact on the property market will be multi-pronged. Right? Mm-hmm. First, for the developers. Huh? So many may choose to delay launches right, where possible, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then, but those who, who are launching, we expect to see uh, certainly better incentives. Yes. Like... Uh, in Singapore, there's actually, a, uh, just lately, uh, there's a very interesting launch, you know, mm-hmm. where uh, the developer choose to absorb all the floor premium. Meaning to say that uh, if a person is to buy on the 20th floor, 
okay. you will be paying the same as if you would on the first floor. Okay. So you can imagine every floor, you know, it's like three to five thousand sing dollars. Uh, if you're on the buying on the twentieth floor, you're saving anything between sixty thousand to a hundred thousand sing. Right? So it's Correct. it's pretty uh, lucrative. So I will see very innovative things coming like that for developers to still low buyers to come in. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, the impact on buyers, the pool will certainly shrink yeah? from fear, probably job losses, mm -hmm. real thing, mm -hmm. or uncertainty. Right? So mm -hmm. more people will probably be sitting on the fence, just yes. waiting. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, many, many will be fearful and many will be fearful you know, and reluctant to mm -hmm. actually engage themselves you know, in a long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. So clearly, this is a bias market. True. Right? And uh, buyers will be spot for choice, that's for sure. Yeah, And as for the sellers, again, uh, probably we'll be seeing a bigger pool of sellers mm -hmm. right, brought about by COVID-19. Right? In, in realty, a lot, of people, a lot of people's business actually had to scale down or close down. Mm -hmm. People lost their jobs, you know. Uh, in fact, I'll come to my tenants uh, afterwards, you know, where yes. some didn't even get paid since February, that all, you know. Wow. So, yeah, so there's real hardship out there, yes. This, okay. this time is actually real. In fact, in my career, you know, in property, I've not, not really experienced something to this magnitude before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really the first time around. And in Australia, it's very interesting, you know. How, how so? The Australian government, mm -hmm. the Australian government, they are actually so fearful that the wealthy foreign investors will come and scoop up all the, the distressed properties. Huh? So yes. they have immediately put on, you know, like immediately, you know, that if any of the sale to a foreigner, mm -hmm. irrespective of the type of property, irrespective of the value of the property, must actually obtain approval from the authorities to oh. sort of like protect the country. Yeah. So they are the first country in the world to actually have quickly jumped into this, you know. So okay. you can see that things are not smelling too good. That's why they come on with something like that so mm. very quickly. Yes. Mm. Uh, so for investors. Yes, yeah. for investors. For investors, right? So the impact would be cash is king. Cash is yeah? king. Still, this is a good time to buy if you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a buyer's market. It's so very obvious, right? Again, mm -hmm. spot for choice. And uh, I tend to think that uh, in a way, these investors are actually helping the market. You can mm. imagine, you no. Know, if let's say I'm a distressed business person, yes. I, I, I really is in dire need of cash flow. I All need right. to actually liquidate my, my property so that I can pump life into my business and grow it again. Mm -hmm. How bad could it be? Then there are no takers, you know. So if there are still takers, you know, to buy from me, it's fine because if I have, I have that that uh, uh, belief in my business, I have that uh, the know how and whatever, I, I'll be able to actually bounce back. And True. in time, I'll buy two or three or four more. True. So it's about giving me that blood when I need it, you know, that lifeline. You see? So right. I get it, the investors do play a very good part as well mm -hmm. uh, to actually help out. So, and then another interesting development I tend to think is yes. because of this MCO, right? Mm -hmm. And even actually worldwide lockdown and so on. Yes. So many businesses have actually explored mm -hmm. having their, their employees work from home, mm -hmm. right? So many businesses, in fact, many of my friends, who tend to think that, no, 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 my business cannot be having employees work from home. Mm -hmm. But this round happened. You know, mm -hmm. they explore and then, hey, it works, you know. Yeah. So with that, I tend to think that this could change the way we buy homes moving forward. All right. right? Many of the, of the home buyers may now be more willing to look further. Mm -hmm. right? Because if I'm working remotely, it doesn't matter. True. So it could open up. But then, of course, uh, with properties where... It is a flexible kind of layout or they have an additional uh, space or additional room where it is easily convertible into a home office will be more desirable. Interesting development for developers as well as investors to think about. Yes, I'm sure a lot of business model might change. Uh, for example, like what you mentioned, uh, people starting to think, hey, I, uh, actually I can mobilize Actually, my employee can actually work from home, which means we come to the point, do I need such a big office space or do I need office space at all? Of course, the other thing will be on co-working space because right now people, you know, interaction, they try to cut down on interaction, even, uh, you know, social distancing needs to be at least one meter away. We tend not to share as many things as we can uh, because this time of time, this point, this point of sensitive time, a lot of things can, can happen. The spread of COVID. you got a very good point there. Yeah, you got a very good point there. Dato. Yes, correct. So, uh, Renny, so what do you think the, the whole business model might change, uh, especially towards uh, the utilization of space? 
Yes, I look at it that like you've just uh, rightly pointed out, you know, this thing with uh, co-working space, this thing, this thing with uh, scaling down, you know, mm -hmm. uh, space requirement. And it's really about staying relevant and True. then as to what is, uh, what is in the market today. Mm -hmm. So with, with, uh, after this pandemic, I believe that uh, there will be quite a paradigm shift in True. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, uh, now started to learn how to call, you know, uh, if not, we will be ordering uh, grab food, etc. And our, how should I say, the urge or the need to go shopping mall has been reduced very much. So probably retail might also be taking some, some, some heat in the short term to mid term time. But the other thing is when you say, I want to get your, your, your thought on this. Uh, in terms of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, how, how will it be different compared to the previous recession that you have seen? And uh, this time around, uh, you know, it, will the impact be greater? Yeah, actually, let's say we talk about the 2008. It was really a credit crisis, all right, uh, in the banking sector. So primarily, it's actually a fundamental issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this pandemic, multiple countries are closing their borders, right? right. As well as locking down and uh, practicing MCOs. So temporary closures of uh, non-essential business, you know, in many, many countries. Mm -hmm. So the usual economic cycle will be crippled and negative multiply effect will affect economies. That's for sure. All right. So four areas of huge concerns are supply chain failures, right? And then massive uh, job losses. You look at airlines, look at hotels today, uh, you know, the yeah. travel industry, uh, they are laying off tens of thousands globally. Right, mm -hmm. and then business closures, whether it's temporary, you know, for this time being, or will they ever open up again? We don't know. So, mm -hmm. limited consumer spending due to lockdowns and job losses. These are the, these are the four huge concerns of today. I believe, okay. right? All right. Businesses will embrace the online technologies for sure. Working from home, right? Possibly uh, for many industries and uh, information sharing and storage, you know, will will move towards uh, being paperless. Mm -hmm. Right, and then crop storage for anytime, anywhere access. So True. this global pandemic will definitely cause a paradigm shift. Many individuals, in fact, many of my friends that I spoke to, you know, mm -hmm. will have a different perspective uh, of life. And I just heard that now you're a good cook, yeah. So uh -huh. you know, changes, changes like that. So yes. what really matters? A lot of people are now asking, you know, is it just material stuff, right? Uh, well. Sickness does not uh, discriminate, you know, the rich or the poor. Yes. The most important is still good health, you know, a sane mind, a, 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 a strong mind, a sane mind, and then of course, a healthy body, you know, these are more important things. Sure. But to sidetrack a little, it has been super heartwarming, you know, I don't know whether you saw this, where the uh, 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 frontline workers, Front you know, they yeah. actually has been, yeah, the NHS staff, uh, they have been appreciated worldwide, you know. Like in China, in the UK, and yeah. as well as in US. In China, you know, when wow, patients I saw are the discharged, video. they knelt down, you know. Oh, yes, I yes. got goosebumps all over. I got tears yes. in my eyes, you know. Yes, it it yes. is so touching. Right? And then in the UK, you know, the, the fire brigade, the public at large, you know, they, they really show their appreciation in different ways. And uh, as well as there are some landlords in UK, they mm -hmm. even offered their homes uh, to the NHS staff for free lodging, you know, just so that they don't have to go home and worry about about uh, infecting their their uh, family members and so on, you know. So these are actually, and then the list just goes on. And in fact, Pizza Hut even pledged three hundred thousand pizzas, you know. So all this uh, has brought up the the better side of people, you know, which is so heartwarming and so so nice to see. And then you just want to ask yourself, what can I do uh, as well, you know? So bringing out the better side of us, so. As in any crisis, if you look deep enough, you know, it will still have things that could actually trigger uh, this kind of things where maybe we are not so vocal or wouldn't do as much if it's not of a crisis. So True. there's a little bit of a silver lining there. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Renisa, what do you think of uh, Bank Nagara uh, newly introduced uh, on the 1st of April, the six months moratorium? Uh, what what will be the impact like towards uh, uh, mostly property investors uh, or property owners? Uh, actually, I, I, I want to cover that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it is really uh, not what I expected. You know? mm -hmm. And I will, I will explain a little bit later. Sure. Why is that? Because just to touch on that a little bit, mm -hmm. this six months deferment, 
Yes. Actually, it's just to defer to pay later. Yeah, still but have it's to pay not later. interest free. Yes, it is. Yeah, meaning to say that every day of the month, whether it's a Sunday or public holiday, interest is still chargeable. Yes, so it's still chargeable. So technically, we wouldn't have as much to pass down to our tenants. Mm-hmm. Because as a property investor myself, I'm really looking hard as to what are the government initiatives that could pass on to me that I could immediately pass on to my tenants so All that right. we can SST over and you know, swim or sing together mm-hmm. kind of thing. Right? So, yeah. I, I don't really think of- the government can, can do much more. What, what are the things that you think government should help uh, property owners to go through this difficult time? What are the initiative or you know, so-called stimulus package that can be introduced by the government? Hmm, probably, uh, I look at it that more on a, a holistic picture. Yes. Of course, uh, investors will need help. But yes. really in dire need right now, I think are the SMEs. You know? True. And uh, to specially, maybe to specially tailor a business mm-hmm. interruption loan. Okay. I would like to call it a business interruption loan mm-hmm. to help this SME stay afloat and help them bounce back because they're so very important, you know. I mean, if each of them is to just employ three or four people, you can just imagine a million and then you are in fact you are actually uh, uh, in fact uh, having affecting three, four, five million people, you know. The domino kind of effect. effect. Of it. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's actually worrisome that that many doors that are closed by this pandemic might just mm. never open again, right? True, so we true. really have to think hard to help them. And I think a business interruption loan with a zero to very, very little interest rate, just mm-hmm. to really help them stand up again, you know, help them bounce back again, is mm-hmm. so very important for all of us, for the economy, for the country. Yeah. All right. And of course, uh, further revision of the mortgage loans servicing, like I said, instead of actually a six months deferment, to give us a six months interest holiday, mm-hmm. which means to say this six months, everything stops and then you continue again on the seven month without mm-hmm. charging us the interest. Then I'm sure you know, 90% or 95% of, of uh, investors will quickly pass this benefit to our to tenants. The tenant, definitely. Yeah? And then this will be really uh, having a very good positive ripple effect as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then of course, um, reduce corporate taxes mm-hmm. yeah, so that we will have more disposable income to plow back into the business, right? To actually, again, keep it to size or, or better still to uh, expand, right? Mm-hmm. And refund excess taxes. I've got many friends, myself included, you know, yes. where there are excesses paid and then this is like, what, nine months down, 10 months down the road, I haven't seen my check, you know? I so if the, if the government could quickly process this to actually give us back to the corporates as well as to the individuals, then we can actually imp- improve our cash flow. Yeah, mm-hmm. and of of course, the uh, government to work with big corporations, example telco, to provide mm-hmm. funds for related industries, example mm-hmm. Maxis to provide to provide aids, you know, uh, mini mini aids to their suppliers, right? Yes. Those that are providing cable network setup, freelance installers, SIM card providers, right? These are the people that really need help. And then again, you know, it is really going just down to help them, which in turn they will again help the whole industry. Yeah. And government to provide mandatory uh, force major to selected industries. Mm-hmm. Because I know that a lot of people are very worried. They have signed contracts, you know. Yes. But because of the supply chain disruption, they cannot deliver. Right? So for certain industries, after studying the government, if they put on a, a, a mandatory you know, FM, then they need not worry and then they can actually concentrate to, instead of having to fight the legal war, you know, to concentrate to just deliver and make good the contract. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So incentives to support local incent- uh, sorry incentives to support local industries. Yes, I think we need to really do a lot for our local industries. So mm-hmm. tax relief incentives for business which support other local businesses. As long as you can prove that you are actually buying from local instead of yes. importing, mm-hmm. right? Then give them tax relief, give them tax incentives. Yeah, mm-hmm. and of course government agencies they can be the first one to say okay, you know we support. Uh, we will local buy industries, yes. buy local products, you know, use Malaysia. local services Correct. whenever possible, wherever possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and of course, uh, where properties are concerned, to seriously consider giving a, a waiver for the property assessment for the second half of 2020. Mm-hmm. That would be of great help. Then yeah. again, you know, we will we'll be able to pass down uh, to our tenants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other thing, Aren, is uh, the yes. hotly debated issue this the relationship between landlord and tenant because at mm. this trying time all the tenant uh they are expecting some discount 
some deferment uh, from the landlord side. Of course, on the other hand, uh, because I personally also receive a few calls from my tenant. On the other hand, as much as you want to give, uh, give this hand out, our hands are also tied. So what, what should be the best way to manage this landlord and tenant relationship at this uh, sensitive time? Mm, that is a, a wonderful question to ask, Dato. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually am prepared for that because I am facing that myself as well. Yes, and yes. I want also, you know, people have attended my seminar, you know, my, my followers and people like that to benefit from uh, my two cents worth, my thoughts, all right? So uh, for those that are swam with uh, tenants asking for concessions, uh, yes. remember that tenants are actually our partners to success, all right? True. Always uh, have that in mind first. True. So to begin with, uh, probably you might want to segregate your tenants, right? Okay. Those that are super good tenants, those that are so-so tenants. Okay. So to be honest, super good tenants, of course, you want to actually use this opportunity, you know, if possible to help them a little bit more because they deserve it, right? Sure. And uh, well, first, if a tenant that gives you a problem every other day, uh, you know, then sorry, uh, you're going to be last on the list. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this is being honest, uh, right? Sure. Sure. So, once you have done that, why do I, I suggest that people do that? Because then you will actually be able to narrow down, you know, to helping the right people first. Helping those who actually have been really holding your hand and being your partner all this way. These people deserve to help the most. So think for them most first, and then it comes down the line. Then it won't be so overwhelming, right? Rather than looking at, let's say you've got maybe 20, uh, 20 tenants, you know, then it's going to be like, wow, so many I can't handle, overwhelmed, you know? So if you divide that, maybe you only have six very good ones or maybe eight very good ones, or if you're lucky, 12 very good ones, that kind of thing. Then it makes the whole process much easier, right? True. Then thereafter, you take a look at your own cash flow. Right, as to how much you can sacrifice to go and help. Because it's very important. You don't want to get to a stage where I still believe charity must begin at home. Isn't it? So you have to strike a balance. You can sacrifice a little, but not to the point that uh, it really hurts. You know? But yeah, do your best is what I'm trying to say. So once you've done that, and location is there already, then it's clearer how you want to do it and then when you want to do it and stuff like that. But before you even do anything, I would suggest that let's wait until the dust settle. Because now we don't know whether we are at the beginning or the mid or tail end. We, we don't know. We really have to see the numbers, the numbers uh, of people that are contracting COVID-19, whether it's plateauing, whether it's going up, whether it's going down. Of mm. course, I think uh, uh, we are being told that uh, our peak is supposedly in another one half, two weeks. Yes, then, yeah. yeah, but then again, you know, all these are, are guess, guess. Like, you know, you, you really right. don't know, right? You have Nobody to knows what see. Sure. Yeah. yeah, now we really don't know because I was just on the line with my, my student in China this morning. Uh -huh. And then she was telling me that, uh, yeah, she was telling me that this is now again a, a scary stuff because people are actually uh, sort of like passing the, the viruses around uh, without any symptoms. You know, I so see. it happened to one of her friends, you know, that appears so healthy, you know, came back to work and then the next thing you know, she's down with COVID-19 and she doesn't even oh. have the, the, the symptom and everybody now is freaking out, you know. It's like, oh no, you know, uh, we were near her and stuff like that. So things like that. So of course, uh, having said all that, we, we pray that it won't happen that we are yes. really uh, at, at, at the peak already and, and about the plateau down and what have you. All right. So um, I actually have got a, a case study yeah, yes. to share. Yeah. Uh, wait, share. A, wait a minute. Huh? I'll load it up. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually a, a case study for now, like I say. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what I've done here is that uh, let's say this is a super good tenant of yours and yes. the rental uh, is 5000 a month. All right. Right. So the first column you look at it would be if you're receiving 5000 every month all right, from mm -hmm. April to December, that's how it goes, uh, flat yes. thing. Uh. Yeah. But let's say to help your tenant, if it's a super uh, good tenant affected very adversely, mm -hmm. then the suggestion is for April, May and June, for yes. the three months, you actually, mm -hmm. actually give him um, time and space to breathe. So he need not pay his rental. All right. Right? And then July onwards, that's where July... August and September, he will pay half a month of the rental. So okay. that is to give him really a lot of breathing space. Yeah. Then come October, November, December, that's where uh, the three months that were not paid in April, May, June, mm -hmm. and the three months that were paid half in July, August, September to okay. actually be, be divided out uh, in October, November, and December. So I this see. were like giving him six months you know, to, to bounce back and then to be able to meet up with the payment. All right. And then we have got option B. 
So that this one yes. uh, will be a little time to turn around is what they need. All right. Yes. So it's not uh, as badly uh, affected as your uh, the one in option A. All so right. this one again, April, May, June uh, need not pay, so that he can really have the cash flow in hand to do whatever he need for his business. Mm -hmm. And then starting July to December, that's where the April, May, June three months rental is being divided over the balance six months. Yes. So it's seven thousand five a month towards yes. the, till December. So then he would have uh, paid off everything. Yeah. And then uh, the option C. This mm -hmm. one will be those that are in much better shape. All so right. that being the case, for April, May, and June, uh, they can manage to pay half a month rental. Mm -hmm. And then for those three months where they paid half month, the mm -hmm. rental is spread over from July till December. Yes. And then again, everything is good. Now, the, the, the next question is, how can we determine what uh, financial situation they are in? Because... Uh, I, I personally encounter one, uh, which means one, one, one of my uh, shop tenant is asking me for reduction. And, uh, and he, he is just actually just rented uh, the next shop for expansion of his business. So then I tell him, hey, uh, you, you, you renting the next door and you're paying higher rental, which means you must be doing quite well. And uh, I don't mind to give you some partial, partial discount. Uh. And uh, so this is one, one case scenario. The other one will be a few of my condo tenants also calling me up. Uh, uh, I, you, you need to give me discount. So uh, because we just don't know. Because for us, is our intention here is if you need, only if you need help. Because we, our site also got hurt. It's not that we are doing exceptionally well and your site is the only party that is suffering. So in this circumstance, what should be the, 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 the thing that we do? What, what would be your advice like? Yeah, my suggestion is, of course, uh, the first thing we try to do is actually to do a search. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a syndrome by heart, you do a search and see their, their audited accounts. Right? So if they are really doing badly or otherwise the last few years. So if let's say the last few years they have been doing well, there are a lot of accumulated uh, uh, profits, so to speak. Mm -hmm. right? So then this few months coming, they cannot be that bad, True. right? Then, of course, second thing is to physically look. Like what you have just pointed out, I think is excellent. If this guy has already rented the neighbor, you know, and in fact for a higher rental for expansion. So mm. all these are signs telling you that he has been doing well, you know, and in fact, he's even uh, expanding. Hence, uh, this will probably not be real. And in fact, I want to take this opportunity to really make two pleas, you know. Okay. The first one is actually to businesses that are actually having strong balance sheet. Yes, everybody globally is affected by COVID-19, mm -hmm. without a doubt, right? But what I have seen is some of the businesses that have very strong balance sheet, they are actually capitalizing on the current situation to squeeze and lock, right? Uh, sorry, that's a realty. Yes. Not all of them are like that, thank goodness. Opportunities small portion are of them are like that. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I plead to them that, look, uh, don't capitalize on the current situation, right? Because uh, I look at it that if you are doing well, then you are doing well. If nobody else knows, you yourself will know, your God will know, your conscience will know. That's sufficient, right? I, I always believe that it is better to give than to receive. And in particular, if you are not in need and you are just putting on a mask, you know, just to capitalize and squeeze landlords, I think it's really very unethical and yes. I, I really it's think that uh, it's not a good thing to do at all, all right? Yes. And then again, I want to plead to landlords, those that are actually doing pretty good and if you have tenants that are really in hardship, yes. please you know, reach out and help them. Like I've got tenants that are actually in the hotel industry, they haven't oh. got paid since February, yeah? And it's they've got February. a family, got a baby at home, yeah, no pay since February, you know? Wow. Yeah, can you imagine? So February, March, you know, and then now coming April and then with a newborn baby. So these are people that are really, really in hardship. And of course, not only I will waive the rental. In fact, I will be buying food for them as well. So these are the kind of things where we really weigh the real situation. You know, this is a pandemic never seen before. And we are talking about many lives being lost. We are talking about people being so terrified because they don't know whether... Tomorrow, it could be me infected for whatever reason, you know. I mean, we hear of people in Singapore, you know, contacting it without having traveled, without having you know, in clusters, inexplainable, right? 
So let's bring out the best part in us and mm -hmm. let's just be a good corporate citizen, you know, mm -hmm. do within our means and at the same time do not capitalize on this and do not put up a front just to squeeze landlords. True. Yeah, the other thing, uh, Renisa, is that uh, yes. you have been through a few recessions. What, what will be the things that you think we can apply uh, from your past experiences in dealing with recessions? Of course, I mean, as an investor, mm -hmm. uh, all the time, it is so very important that you budget correctly, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, it is always good to on and off uh, consolidate. You know, you have to look, look at your, your own spreadsheet on, on all your investment. You've got to look inside as to whether uh, at a certain age, uh, is it still you want to continue investing or you want to consolidate into properties where it doesn't need uh, so much time to manage. Uh, it's really about striking a balance as you move along so mm -hmm. that life will become more comfortable and then you get to have the kind of life that you want. I mean, I have got friends that are into their 60s, 70s. They, they, they enjoy managing, so they don't mind, you see. But I've got friends that are 40 and say, no, I think I want to call it a day. I don't want to do any more, you know. So it's, it's very subjective. Yes, yes. But uh, I think it's important to listen to yourself, to mm -hmm. listen to your heart and your mind as to what you really want moving forward so mm -hmm. that you can tailor and your pacing, you know, is same with your thoughts. So yes. I think the key issue is a lot of people, they don't pace with their thoughts. They'll be thinking one thing, doing another thing, you know. <laughs> so then it won't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether recession or otherwise, it is so very important that uh, on and off, we have to take stock, right? And we have to be aware of where we're heading, right? Recheck whether this is really where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, reach and then turn around and say, hey, wrong way, you know. <laughs> you have wasted a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of energy. So mm -hmm. really it's about that, I think. Wow. Yeah. Good sharing. Uh, Renisha, the other thing is, this is the, I would say the most uh, sought after questions, the most important questions that all our listeners will, will want to hear it from you. Uh, what is your property investment strategy at this current time? Uh, well, I don't know whether you are going to believe this, but actually all the time, my strategies doesn't change too much. You know, I'm into looking at uh, good investment, great properties all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm into looking at uh, good buys, value buys. Yeah. So it's really about keeping out. I have got certain areas that I've been eyeing, you know, uh, uh, like uh, over a period of time. And then uh, it actually changes sometimes. But I will always have three or four areas that I would want to have more properties in or I want to actually go in. So it's about uh, having my years out and having my good friends in uh, uh, in the, the real estate industry or the negotiators helping me to have a look up that mm -hmm. if, if it actually comes to that kind of uh, value that I'm looking at mm -hmm. then I'm ready and then I will go in so mm -hmm. I always actually have a reserve fund to of course a cushion fund a reserve fund a cushion fund is just to really bridge through you know any bad times a reserve mm -hmm. fund is in just in case I see a property that is something I've been eyeing for a while at a price that I want or below the price I want I will quickly jump in because mm -hmm. I'm ready all right so yeah, it, it is really like that. Yeah, Renisha, maybe you can share with us uh, some pointers uh, for your value investing in property. What are some of the maybe key criteria that you set? What are the checklists that you set uh, before you embark on any property purchase? Now, that's actually a very subjective thing. Yes. You see, uh, different, I think different people will probably have different criterions uh, when it comes yes. to this. Because if let's say you're looking at cash flow, Mm -hmm. You want a very good cash flow, yes. right? Then uh, there are so many there are so many types of properties that you can look at that will give you good cash flow. But perhaps if let's say a good cash flow might uh, entail a lot of work, are you prepared for it? Like no. example, student accommodation. Mm -hmm. If you take on you know a, a, an apartment and then you subdivide it, you know, then you get tenant ten tenants in each paying you Correct. one thousand below right. 10,000 you know so it's good cash flow see? but it then is. again managing them you know uh, when you go in also you must have a shield you don't know whatever <laughs> your main door right so I mean yeah this is the kind of thing that uh, you, you have to bite the bullet you know if, if this Correct. is what you want Correct. so it, it's really about uh, 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 being clear of uh, what kind of personality you are whether mm. you actually like to be uh, doing a lot of this kind of uh, footwork or you would prefer an industrial property where your tenant goes in like one of my tenants has been there for like what 15 years uh, just want to renew another three plus three you know so so it is it's actually pretty subjective i believe true depending on our appetite uh, so to speak yes. yeah 
Lastly, Renisil, uh, what will be the strategy uh, should investors uh, adopt uh, at this point of time? If, uh, of course, for those that have some extra money to invest in, well, actually, uh, I would think that first thing first, right? During this MCO, I think a lot of us uh, should have uh, a lot of time. Or, uh, sorry, maybe think of it. I, I don't have time. So, okay. <laughs> so, during this, I don't know why I'm so busy on you know, this MCO. Yeah, because maybe, uh, yeah, it's a bit different. But for those of us who actually have a little bit more time, first yes. thing first, right, is yes. to actually stay calm, then reassess, rethink, right, uh, review your portfolio. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then if you're happy with what you're already having, then ask yourself why why are you happy over this? All right, is it because the cash flow coming in is very good? You know, even <laughs> though you're busy seven days a week, if you're happy, fine, go ahead. You know, continue your 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 strategies that you have been applying. All right, but if you think no, I want more time for my wife, or want more time for my husband. You know, uh, then it's about time that maybe you want to uh, change course a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. embark in something that doesn't need so much of your time. Sure. Right? So this is probably the time where you can. You can actually be collected. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about other things. You're not distracted, right? You're at home. You can sit down and calmly and quietly review that, and then uh, embark on a happier path. Uh, is what I'm True. trying to say. True. And then, of course, um, if you are ready, then uh, now I think the interest rates are pretty low, right? You mm-hmm. might want to refinance to squeeze out more equity so that you can actually uh, expand your game or. or uh, but shorten your, your investment period to get what you want. Right? Yes. So those are the keys. And then again, also, I think uh, because of this COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, there may be many businesses that could be in hardship. Mm. So one of the things that I have done before is that uh, when I came across uh, businesses that are struggling, you know, uh, but they are actually uh, occupying their own property to operate from, Yes. Yeah. So uh, this, of course, you can talk to your friends, 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 and then you know, uh, open up your ears and what have you. So I have done that by buying over the property and mm-hmm. keeping the tenant. Oh. So the person has operated that there for like eight years, ten years, you know, some five years, six years. So they, they need the space. They have done up the renovation to suit their business needs, you know. So if they had to go off, all that is going to be turned to dust. Is of no value at all. True, so true. I actually rent it back to them. And mm-hmm. then again, I told them that the day you are ready to buy the property back from me, I will sell it back to you, you know, maybe a little bit below market if, you know, let's say I, I got it for a million, you know, mm-hmm. and today the market price could be 1.8. It's okay to get it back to him at 1.6 because I actually have already collected in the last five years, you know, the kind of rental. So I think this, uh, this is a win-win-win kind of situation. True. You will feel very good, you know. It's not just about making money, but True. it's to see that same guy, buying back the same property that he actually initially invested in and then helping him actually bounce back. Uh, you make some money, a little bit less, but that's fine, you know, because you already made money. So the key I'm is that right you up. did make money. Yes. So this kind of thing uh, gives me a lot of happiness rather than just a good deal and making a lot of money. Well, like I say, everyone is different. But sure. um, these are the kind of things that you can wake up midnight and still be smiling. Yeah, you change people's life. <laughs> <laughs> That's I came another. from very humble beginnings, start up. So, yes. yeah. So, my contentment level is uh, pretty low. True, true. Understand. Uh, with that, uh, thank you very much, uh, Renisil, for your selfless uh, sharing. And uh, we really got a lot of insights from your sharing, especially from your own experience, how you, uh, how you actually share with us to apply it. And uh, for me, the biggest takeaway will be categorize our tenant into, you know, uh, type A, type B, type C, and we act accordingly. So uh, with that, again, thank you very much for your time, Renisil. Really appreciate it. Wishing you all the best. And uh, may all the investors out there, uh, those that have extra cash, you can start hunting. And may you all find the, the, the best deal of the decade. Thank you for having me, Dr. KK. So everybody stay home, stay safe, stay and home, stay wealthy. Yes.